And then he says, he who has ears, let him hear. Everybody in that crowd had ears. But not everybody was hearing. Just as my wife said, sometimes God speaks and we don't hear it. Sometimes God says something and we just shake it off and say, no, that can't be, that can't be the Lord. Sometimes the things he's told me to do, I've had to go back and question over and over and over. Are you sure about that, Lord? In verse 10, and the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? Why are you telling these little illustrations? And Jesus said, and listen to this. Because it has been given to you to know the mystery, the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. You see, the kingdom of heaven uh, uh, apparently in the days of Christ was even a mystery because their expectations were different than what they were getting. What they were expecting was a king that was going to come and overthrow every, overthrow the government, overthrow Rome, take all evil off of this earth, and that he was going to sit on the throne of David and rule forever. That was their understanding of the kingdom. But Jesus said, it has been given to you to know the mystery, but to them it has not been given. As I told you last week, the kingdom of heaven invaded. The kingdom of heaven invaded time. And then Jesus starts talking to them. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables. Because seeing they do not see... And hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the heart of this people has grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have been closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart and turn so that I should heal them. And he's quoting Isaiah here. He did not come as they had expected him. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven was not being perceived by them as they had interpreted it from the prophets. That's why Jesus said, it has now been revealed to you. These 12 men had been chosen, selected, and not only these 12, but others. In fact, in Luke chapter 10, we are given the number of 70 disciples that he sent out. There were more than 12. These were the 12 leaders that were with him every day, but spread throughout all the area of the Sea of Galilee and all over Israel. There were those who believed that this was the Son of God. Now we're entering into a season when we must keep our minds and our hearts clear and pure to understand the, the, the whole reason why Jesus Christ came, why, he, why grace came, why mercy came and, and, and replaced law, why that Jesus died on the cross, why did the resurrection happen. We, these are beautiful stories and songs that have been written about them and, and plays that have been given, but there is a meaning behind every thing that he did. God doesn't do anything by accident. God doesn't do anything by mistake. There is a divine process in everything that God does. Our earth is going around the sun at 18.6 miles per second. It has been doing that since the beginning of time. It has not sped up. It has not slowed down. It has maintained 18.6 miles per second circling around the sun. If it was to slow down to 14, 
We'd be drawn so close to the sun until we wouldn't be able to survive as we know it. If it was to speed up and go 25, we would be so far away from the sun that we would freeze to death. And life as we know it does not exist. But you see, God is so precise in His working that He put this earth at 18.6 miles per second like a little top and started spinning it around the sun. We have our seasons. It tilts. It moves. All of it is a divine plan of God. The seed dies before it comes. God's plan. The seed is put into the ground. And then when the seed dies, you often will go pull a new sprout out of the ground only to find the dead seed at the very bottom of it. Jesus went into the earth and this was what he said, unless a seed die, how can it? He was, he was simply proclaiming that in order for the kingdom of God to be complete, this is what must happen. Bear with me. I get excited and get ahead of myself. But in verse 16, he said, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Because these disciples were seeing, and they were making a confession. A little further on, in Matthew 18, Jesus said to, to the disciples, Who do the people say I am? Well, some of them say you are, um, you are Elijah. Others say you're John the Baptist. I mean, they're just picking at straws because they can't figure this out. Man turns water into wine, walks on water. He opens the blind eyes. He makes leprosy go away. I mean, just look at what this man does. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. The things that Jesus are doing. Buses would be backed up from here to Chattanooga to get into the auditorium to see this man perform the miracles that he was performing. And we call him Jesus. We call him our friend and call him Lord. And then he said, but who do you say? See, it doesn't matter what others say. He personalizes it. He says, but who do you say I am? And Peter very quickly blurts it out. He says, thou art the Christ. You are the son of the living God. See, his eyes had seen. His ears had heard. And then Jesus said, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you. But God Almighty has revealed that unto you. That that's who I am. Then he said upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build my church. I'm getting, I, I, I did promise uh, on my Facebook page last night that I would preach an extra hour today for those who overslept. I got more response from that than anything I've ever posted. <laughs> but I'm not. Come on, Chris. Uh, because all of this is going to take us to our Easter Sunday. The kingdom of heaven. And he's saying, he's saying to them, I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it. And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Then he explains to the disciples what he had just told to the others in the parable. Now, go over to verse 31. The kingdom of heaven is like. Drop down to verse 33. The kingdom of heaven is like. You see? What he, what he, is, he is continually talking to them and explaining to them what the kingdom of heaven is like. Verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found. And then when he found the treasure, he hid it. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has. And he buys that field because of the treasure that's in that field. See, what Jesus is saying to the disciples is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is that you give up everything you have to buy into the kingdom. Now, it doesn't cost you anything to belong to the kingdom. But we're talking about 
what he wants more than anything. And that is your will, your mind, and your emotions. That's what makes up your soul. Say this with me. I am a spirit. I dwell in a body. And I possess a soul. Remember that. I am a spirit. I dwell in a body. And I possess a soul. That's the tripartiteness of man. But also the tripartiteness of the soul is your will, your mind, and your emotions. That's where the war is. The war between the devil and the war between God. And God gives us our free will. Our ability to choose. Our, our emotions. Our minds. Happy, blessed is the man whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Thy will, I give you my will, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, your emotions. You see, here is the war. That's what makes up our, our soul. And Jesus is, is saying... That you will, you, you, you will give up your will, your mind, and your emotions. You will give up all of that to buy this field that the kingdom of heaven is established in. Now that's metaphorical. Understand, he's talking in parables here. But we understand because he opened our eyes that we could see. He opened our ears that we could hear and have understanding Again, in verse 45, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. Who, when he found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had. And he bought that pearl of great price. You see, everything that the world has to offer us cannot compare to the value of belonging to the kingdom of God. There is a peace that comes over you when you lay in your bed at night knowing that your will, your mind, and your emotions belong to God. There is a, a, a peace that overwhelms us when we realize that it is well with our souls. It's so good to have Linda and Jim here today. Linda and I talk at, at uh, Southern Hills every day that I'm walking in and out. It's just about the Lord. Last conversation we had on Wednesday. You see a lot of death there. I know one week we had two die in CCU on Thursday and two on Friday. Sad day. For some reason, I don't know why, but I thought of Harvey English this week. God bless him. Harvey English was one of my mentors. Taught me how to drive a bus. He was a graduate of the University of North Carolina. PhD. Had all kinds, but he was a bus driver. That was his profession. That's what he retired as. He could go anywhere that Greyhound went free of charge. He and his wife. So when I started pastoring the Lord's Chapel, he would come see his son in Hendersonville, and he'd come to church over there, visit with me. He lived in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I received a call. From, the only man that ever called me Robert and got away with it. My real name is Bobby, not Robert. But he'd always call me Robert. In fact, when I was in Bible college at 19, Every month, he would let me fill his pulpit. And he gave me $50 in 1965. That was a lot of money, 1965, for one sermon. To, and he paid me. What he was doing was teaching me how to pastor a church, mentoring me. Brother Harvey got bone cancer, and he was dying. He called me. He said, he said, Robert, Harvey English here. 
he had a very distinct voice. You could not mistake him from anybody. He said, I just called to say, I'll see you later. I said, are, are you coming to Nashville? He says, no, not going there. He said, uh, I'm going home. And I could tell what he meant. He said, I've got cancer. Nothing they can do. He said, the doctors have said that I have two, three weeks to live. So I'm calling all my friends and telling them where I'm going to be. I didn't call to say goodbye. I just called to say, I'll see you later. I'm going to tell you, it was the hardest telephone call I ever had. On the other end of that phone was the calmest voice I've ever heard in my life. In fact, there was joy coming out of that voice. He was excited. It wasn't sad. Oh, what a precious man. You know what? He understood the value of, I have found a pearl of great price. And I'm willing to give up everything here. Because I sold out a long time ago to Jesus. That's all God wants. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but would have everlasting life. That's what God wants. It's for us to believe in His Son, to receive Jesus and let the will of God be our will, do the will of the Father every day of our life, that nothing, nothing, nothing or no one be more important than that pearl of great price. Father, I love you so much today and I thank you for your love for us. Mm. I cannot comprehend how much, how much you love us. It is the kingdom of heaven, Lord, it is a mystery. And as I've studied and prepared to share with these people about what you want us to do right now. And Lord, I don't think it's just sit around and twiddle our thumbs and sing soon and very soon we're going to see the king. But I think, Lord, that you want us to get busy seeing how many people we can get ready when you do come. So Lord, help us to have a greater understanding that the kingdom is not what the king can give to us, but what we can give to the king. I don't have frankincense and myrrh, and I don't have gold to bring, but I do have myself. So Father, I give you me today. Every inch, every pound, in all of my mind and all that is within me, I surrender to you. And I pray that from this moment on, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. And that I walk in a way that will make people say, I want to follow who he's following. And that I... I will exemplify everything that your kingdom exemplifies. And I pray for those who are here right now who are thinking in their hearts, what do I need to do? What is my next step? Lord, reveal it to them right now. Because we do want your will. More than anything else, your will in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask my wife and Brother Harville to come stand here before you today. I will conclude this series next Sunday on the kingdom. There's so much more. And, and it's been so scattered. For that, I apologize. But I, I get so caught up 
in, in, in what he's saying until it's hard sometimes to convey it all to you. But they're going to come, and it is the custom of our church, if you're sick and you need healing, or if you just want to rededicate your life to Jesus, come. Are there any sick among you? James says. Let them call for the elders of the church. Anoint their head with oil. If they have any sins, they will be forgiven them. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And you will be healed. That's what James 5, 14 and 15 says. And we exercise that. And we invite you now, while we sing, to come. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 I will serve thee because I Nothing before you found me, you have given life to me. What I long for, you have given life to me. Sing it with us, would you? I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given and life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Hallelujah. and pieces when lives are white you died on Calvary oh such is what I long for you have given and life to me. To those of you who are watching us on the streaming today, 
Remember that Jesus loves you. Even if you're in your home or you're watching this from your office or wherever, all He's asking is to have you, your will, your mind, and your emotions learn to do the will of the Father. What is it, Lord, that you want me to do? It's all found between Matthew and Revelation. This is what I want you to do. Read the red. I encourage everybody, no matter what your Bible study is, that you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and concentrate on the red. Learn what thus saith the Lord. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Ah uh-huh.